Do, do. Okay, so I want to begin this meeting by letting everybody know that the board has approved the procedures for this meeting. Uh, they're written down. They are they could be made available if you'd like to see them. Um, but the board has approved these procedures. I also want to let you know that the board has reviewed and recommends the new positions um, as stated. And then the last thing I want to tell you is that we will be voting on each position. Uh, it's majority vote, and the votes are up or down. So it's a yes or no vote. If the vote is no, then the position will be sent back to the committee and will be reworked. We won't do any discussing here um, because the, the discussion happened at the consensus meetings. But if there is a no vote on a particular position, then it will go back to the election administration committee to be examined, reworked, maybe restated, and then We lost the volume. Yeah, and you're on mute. Yeah, you're Everyone showing. Everyone was on. muted, and that included you, Anne. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You're good. Unmute? You're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have some technical difficulties. Laura. Yeah, we've got two Laura. volume. For too many people. Zoom three's mute. It looks like it's still showing. It's like what it's still here? muted. Where's the Zoom? Uh, it's. I was trying to get more screenshot. But... Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, excellent. And if everybody would unmute, please. I mean, sorry, mute, mute. Don't unmute, mute. Okay, let me go over again really quickly the, the couple of things that I went over. The board has approved the procedures for this, uh, for today's meeting. And the board has also reviewed and recommended the new positions. So um, so we have had a chance to look at those. Also, major majority vote passes these positions, um, and the, the vote is a yes or a no, an up or down vote. If there's a no vote on any particular position, then it will be sent back to committee, sent back to the board for review, and then we will vote on that in the April election, in the April uh, annual meeting. And that annual meeting is April 27th, I believe. That's a little bit earlier than usual. We usually have our annual meeting in May, but we have changed it to April this year for everyone's convenience to avoid graduations and Mother's Day. Um, there will be no other agenda item for this meeting because it is a special meeting. Our bylaws uh, call for us to only examine the, the one agenda item that's been, that the meeting has been called for. Um, Can you guys hear me okay? Great. Okay. So the way this works is that we will uh, take a look at each position and then there'll be a call, a motion. I will call for a motion. The motion will be on the table. Then we'll ask if you have any clarifying questions. We'll answer those clarifying questions. By we, I mean Greg and his team. Uh, and then after that, we will have a vote. So do you want to go ahead and read the? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and use the mic. 
Okay, can everybody hear me? And um, Jim, if you could let me know if the Zoom people are saying that they can hear me also. Can everybody hear me on the Zoom call? Yeah. Okay, we got a thumbs up there. Okay, before we go into this, I do want to give a thank you to um, Julie Adolphson, or Marcus Mountjoy, uh, Stan Sexton, and Melanie Bussey, who are members of the Election Administration Study Team. They did um, so much research and so much work on this. The other group I'd like to... The other group I'd like to thank are... Uh, many of you that are present that attended the consensus meetings, both the people here at the meeting and the people on the Zoom call. One thing to remember in, on these positions, these positions were not crafted by the election administration study team. They were crafted during the consensus meetings. In other words, they were the result of the discussion. They are the sense of uh, the group at the consensus meeting. Okay, all right, let's begin. What I'm going to do is, as Ann said, I'm going to read the position, and uh, then we're going to look for a motion, and then we will, once we have the motion, we'll have discussion. Uh, do we have any technical issues here? Okay, so under the theme of voter registration, there are two possible positions, two proposed positions. The first um, has to do with vote, voter registration. The League of Women Voters of Kansas City endorses automatic voter registration as it makes political participation easier and more effective. Is there a motion to advance this position? Oh, I should probably call that. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, is there a motion to advance this issue? Jim? Uh, I so move. Yeah, we have to read it. I move that we adopt oh, this position. Position, position are they numbered? Position number one. one. Uh, that the League of Women Voters of Kansas City endorses automatic voter registration as it makes political participation easier and more effective. And do we have a second? Yeah. Okay. Cindy Cart, second. All right. Any clarifying questions? Uh, I couldn't hear it. The motion. Just, just a second, um, oh, Stacy. Yeah. The, the motions. Um, oh, okay. So Good. we need to move the. Mic oh, we need to bring yeah. the yeah. people up here. Yeah. Okay. Jim Calvert moved that we um, adopt the position number one as stated, and it was seconded by Cindy Cart. And thank you for letting us know. We'll bring the people who call the motion up. Okay. And then now there's a question from Elizabeth Dar. My question has these are two possible positions. Can we accept both of them, or do we have to just prioritize one or the other? Oh, okay. So uh, they are what we have are th uh, in total. Um, in total, we have 12 positions, and we were going to consider each of the positions individually as they related to, um, say, and, and where these will eventually reside will be as separate items in our um, position document. Uh, the League of Women Voters position document. And so that's why they are as presented separately, because that is the way they are going to be presented uh, and noted in our positions uh, summaries. Yeah. So each of these is a possible position. It's not, it's not um, and or, or it's on this one or this one, it's both. Any other? It seems to me that position two is a fleshed out position one. And that's why I'm asking. Okay, and the next question was from Elizabeth was, it seems that position two is a, a fleshed out version of position one. And so that's why she asked that question. So let me give a clarification here. On position two, let me read position two. The league supports me measures that facilitate voter <laughs> registration. And perhaps that is um, um, repetitious of number one, but if that was embedded when that was crafted, number two. And number two has to do with the league supports efforts to ensure that Missouri is in compliance with the National uh, Voter Registration Act, okay? And that the Missouri Department of Motor Vehicles has incorporated voter registration services um, uh, into their driver's license application renewal and change of name and, and address process. 
Um, so these are two very different things. For example, the NVRA is a federal law that is in existence. And the question in number two has to deal with Missouri's compliance, okay? Number one has to do with automatic voter registration, which is a very, which is um, a concept that is in use in some states, but definitely not in use in Missouri, and it is definitely not a national statute. Um, is it possible for you to put that screen up on that computer for the Zoom room? Is it not up on the Zoom room? No. Oh, okay. Do that. Let's go to Zoom. Share screen. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Julie? Just a, a rules question. Uh, when we vote, is it just a majority? Yes. And the position passes? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so the question was, when we vote, is it a majority? Um, and then the position pa it passes. And yes, it is 50% plus one vote that passes. Any other questions? Okay, then we will vote to adopt position number one. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. And can you jot down how many raise their hand on Zoom? We'll take just a moment to count on Zoom. I vote yes. Tommy Sexton and Stan okay. Sexton. Okay, plus two. Thank you, Tommy. This is Carla Roberts, and I don't know how to vote on Zoom. I'm looking, but I don't see it. Okay, vote. If you're, I vote if, yes. If you're okay, and if you're on camera, you can ra just raise your hand. Um, I'm not on camera. Okay, so we have 22 here. That that uh, that motion clearly passes. <laughs> so <laughs> that motion passes. Thank you. All right, uh, the, next, the next position is the league supports measures that facilitate voter registration. The LWV should support efforts to ensure that Missouri is in compliance with the NVRA, which is the National Voter Registration, registration Act. Thank you. <laughs> and that the Missouri DMV has incorporated voter registration services into their driver's license application, renewal, and change of name and address processes as NVRA compliance facilitates voter registration. The league sh should litigate or take other actions when the state of Missouri fails to comply with the NVRA, either with or without other organizations that support voting rights registration. So, uh, would someone like to make a motion? And you both have struggled with NVRA. Can someone just goes in and it can spell out what that means? Yes, I know that's not a yeah. that's not a uh, a change that makes a substantive difference. So the question was, could we spell out NVRA in the actual in the positions when they are voted in? That's not a substantive change. So yes, we will do that. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? Who's willing to hop up here because they have to, it has to be heard. <laughs> I can bring the mic, mic out. I know, but they can't, the Zoomer won't be able to hear it. Oh, <laughs> I shouldn't have been. Sorry. <laughs> I know we may, we may encourage the people on the edge to come in. Up and make yeah, motions. I agree. <laughs> Okay. And you don't have, I think since we read it already, you could say as previously read, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> I move that we adopt the position two as was just read. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth Dar seconds. Okay. That it has been moved and seconded. Do we have any questions? Yeah, the next round may go a little faster. Any questions in the Zoom room? I do. Uh, okay. Uh, I do. Okay, I've got, I just heard from Jimmy. So let me, uh, 
Yes, which it what so, was so the question was are these state positions and if not why I responded they are not and I'm not sure why but we often tend okay. to lead on these so uh that was a good question and a good answer. <laughs> so the question was are these state positions and if they are not state positions why not? And the answer is no they are not state positions are voted in at the state level but we often take the lead on these sorts of things and so um, the plan is actually to take it to the state convention um, the state conference is yeah, it a conference it, or convention it, it, to advance it to the state we are going to advance it to the state uh when the state next meets um so it it is certainly our plan to make these um state positions good question and in in fact there is there is precedent because the results of last year's study were advanced to the state and those that were proposed by our league became state positions. Okay, was that your question, Reva? I think that no. was your question. Um, can you hear me? Yep. I'm getting on my screen, all I'm getting is Stacy Webb's name. There's I don't see any positions on there. I don't know why her her screen is on my screen. Stacy Webb's. I don't um, either. <laughs> let me. Well, I was getting the positions. Oh, okay. I was getting it, and all of a sudden, Stacy's website came up. I mean, it's just her name. It's black, so her it's, screen is on my screen. I don't know. It'll be because if Stacy Webb was talking, it'll. it'll yeah, we we think it might be because if you've got it on whoever the speaker is, that it might be. So you might put your view on gallery view or try try different views. Yeah. Well, let's see. It's on. But we did you hear me read the position? I did, but um, and and I had it on my computer. It was just all of a sudden it it went away, and um, I. Um, we have another question. Okay, we have another question. So I'll I'll let you work on that, Reva. Okay. So the question is, if it's, oh, here we go, got it. Then the position should be LWV with the KC added. So in other words, like mm -hmm. for instance, in the, it says the LWV should support right efforts, so it should be LWV KC. Right. So the question is, uh, should these positions be stated as LWV KC rather than LWV? Peg, Peg has an answer. Because they are only going to be in the title of our position, our League of Women Voters of Kansas City, these positions are all only Kansas City positions. Okay, thank you, Peg. I think you're covered not having any <laughs> consensus this state. <laughs> okay, so Peg, the answer is... Uh, that because these will only be listed under the heading of our positions, these are designated as Kansas City League of Women Voters, Kansas City positions, then uh, we're covered. We don't need to redo all of these. Um, and Peg, could we make that change since that is also not a substantive change? Remember, our positions would say League of Women Voters, Kansas City, okay. Jackson, Clay, Platt. Oh, right, okay, right. So it covers everybody. Right. And so just because you have LWBKC doesn't mean that it doesn't cover Platt. Right. I gotcha. Okay, so what Peg said was that we use shorthand anyway. LWBKC is actually shorthand to start with for League of Women Voters of Kansas City, Jackson, Clay, and Platt counties. So we will not put that in, you know, every single time we've got an instance of LWV in our positions, we will not put the whole name. That would take up too much real estate. <laughs> okay, those are good questions. Any other clarifying questions? Okay, we've got just one more. Yeah, yeah. Ask him to come back in. We'll let him back in. Thank you for letting us know. It just didn't work. It just said out. Yeah. 
and we let him in the first time and then he bounced back he bounced out and yeah. came back in and that's yeah. often a sign <laughs> yeah we're sorry we we uh we accidentally let kept someone out who's a member because of previous hacking <laughs> so thank you for letting us know so, okay any other questions in the zoom room yes um after a whole lot of conversation getting Rita's screen working um Stacy Webb says was Kelly's point addressed if it's just us then the position should be elder than me with Casey at it so uh the position that that question was addressed yes yeah. so you'll yeah. see that in the minutes Okay, any other clarified questions? Okay, let's take a vote. All those in favor of, oh, oh, you guys are just, the hands are just going up for the early vote. Okay, I thought it was a question. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. <laughs> we did get a second, yes. Okay, and I now, I just realized I have a count here. You don't have to count. Oh, okay. So we have 23 in the Zoom room and 19 here. So that motion passes as well. Stan and Tommy Sexton, yes. Okay, great. So we have two, two additional besides the ones that showed up there. Okay, great. So the next position, these will go faster, I think, once, once we all have answered those clarifying questions, which are good ones. Uh, the third position, the league's actions that engage voters and encourage them to vote is core political speech that should be protected. The League of Women Voters should defend its right and primary mission of engaging voters and promoting voting. So we need a motion from somebody who can, either from the Zoom room or somebody who can hop up here real quick. <laughs> okay, we've got a motion coming from Julie. I move that we vote on the third party voter registration we position adopt. number three. That we adopt. And we adopt it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do we have a second? All right, Laura Mar Mar Marcus Mountjoy seconds it. And do we have any clarifying questions? Okay, no no questions on the table. Let's vote to uh, adopt or not adopt, or sorry, just vote to adopt. Raise your hand if we, the vote is yes. <laughs> I'll get this whole parliament thing down 10 minutes before I'm done being president. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have 21 in the Zoom room. My guess is we have a couple. Stan and Tommy Sexton, yes. My guess is we had Stan and Tommy Sexton as well. So 23 in the Zoom, 22 in the Zoom room. So that I had a question. Have... Yes. I had a question and I couldn't type that fast. Uh-oh, okay. If this is in our mission, why does it need to be a position? <laughs> okay, I'll let Greg answer. Okay, this has to deal, to give the history, um, when House Bill 1878 was approved, that place restrictions and onerous penalties, um, it resulted in, in the state of Kansas, a similar bill ceasing voter registration activities. And it was being considered here. That was, was considered a possible option. And we had members do that. Absent a position, it was not clear what our action would be when, um, even though it's our mission, it was never clear what our action would be. And in fact, in Kansas, the action that was taken was different from the action taken in Missouri. So that is the reason why uh, we have a position that states what we are going to do to defend um, this mission. Great. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say that the defend is the important word in that. Um, OK, so that we went a little out of order. Um, but I will say to those of you in the Zoom room, if you've got a question and I understand it's it, it can be hard to type that fast, just just raise your hand or say I've got a question and we'll stop and we'll let you say it out loud. So thank, thank you. Apologies. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. 
All right. Possible position. Uh, in front of the Zoom. Yes. Yes. May I circle? This is from Judy Ann. May I circle round to the LWV versus LWV KC question? Okay. Sure. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to clarify that so it because LWV is a term for national and for all encompassing league. Um, are we, it is confusing to me, are we making these positions for the entirety of LWV or this is our, these are our positions for LWVKC? No, we don't have, so the question was for those of you here in the live audience, um, are we voting in positions for the national organization uh, rather than the local organization. No, we don't have the ability to vote in the a position at the national level. So these are for uh, our local positions. And so these will be listed on our website and in our other documentation um, under our list of positions. So it will be clearly stated at the top that these are League of Women Voters, Kansas City, Jackson, Clay, and Platte County positions. I I guess I would just wonder if we could put just not writing out the whole name all the time, but just LWVKC supports voter registration. You know, um, I, I guess I would just put that on the table again, um, including KC after LWV. But but if we feel that having it at the top that we are saying LWV equals LWVKC. Um, I defer to that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, possible position number four. The league opposes. Did you vote on number two? We did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. All right, the, the league opposes possible position number four. The league opposes legislation and practices that remove registration solely on the basis of inactivity. Voting is not mandatory, purging on the sole basis of inactivity is punitive. So somebody who somebody from the Zoom room like to make a motion? So far. <laughs> I see three. Janelle's got her hand up. Janelle? Yeah, I make a motion that we um put forward and approve this position of the um voter purging as being oh, I'll just say the voter purging um position. As I also wanted to make that motion. Okay, you can do the next one, Kareem. Okay, do we have a second? <laughs> Pauline seconds it. All right, any clarifying questions? And I might encourage everybody in the Zoom room to put your hands down if they're left over from the last vote so that we know who's got questions. So I do have a question, and this is Janelle in the Zoom room, um, and perhaps this question is is best um, poised to the com committee. But um, we do not need to um, like originate or say where the voting roll purges are coming from. Do we? Is it best to stay general? Well, that. <laughs> So we can't uh, we can't modify these positions. It's either an up or down. So if that if this vote is voted down, then we would re-examine the wording. But for today, it's an up or down vote. So um, so that doesn't really answer the question, except that we really don't get to examine the wording. But I'm going to let Greg also answer. General, uh, in all cases. Um... Purges occur uh, either at election boards or election boards at the behest of the Secretary of State. And so, again, direction, thank you. Um, so, it, there's the, the sources are fairly finite of, of purges. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Zoom room, any other questions? Okay, there being no other questions on the table, I'm gonna, we'll take a vote on position number four. 
Raise your hand if you would like to approve position number four as written. Okay. We Stan have... and Tommy Sexton approve. We're in the safe driving mode. Thank you. I appreciate that you're being safe. So we have 25 in the Zoom room and 19 here. So that motion passes. Thank you. All right. Motion number five. The league believes that organizations, including political parties, should not be allowed to use caging and purging methods, often geographically targeted, to remove registered voters from the voter registration rolls. Caging efforts are non-uniform as they are targeted and discriminatory. LWV supports voter registration role management efforts that are uniform, transparent, and non-discriminatory. So, Kareen, would you like to make a motion? Uh, she makes a motion to accept position number five. Okay. In the chat, she has written that she accepts the motion. She uh, makes a motion to accept position, to adopt position number five. And Janice Comer seconds the motion. Are there any questions? Okay. Can, yeah, um, Anne. Oh. Yep. It's Reva. Could, yep. could, uh, Greg, would you please just um, define caging again? I know you did it at the meet, other meeting, but could you define that again, please? Yeah, happy to. So um, caging is where a political party um, will identify a zip code where people aren't voting the way they want them to vote. And then what they will do is they will send out mailings to and targeted mailings to the precincts where people aren't voting the way they want them to. And then they'll get the bounce back mail. And then using the bounce back mail, then they will go to the election board and they will say, these voter registrations should be challenged. And the problem with that approach is that it is, as we say at the very end, it is a voter registration role management um, procedure that is neither uniform uh, nor non-discriminatory, okay? Because to put it another way, um, it's you're choosing your voters and, it's, and again, it's discriminatory. And so what we're, that's, that's the logic in this position, but uh, does that answer the question? Yes, you know? yes, thank you. Thank you, Greg. All right, any other? Clarifying questions. Okay, please raise your hand if you vote in favor of adopting this position. Stan and Tommy vote yes. Thank you. 24. 26, 26 online. Yeah, because there's a verbal, oh, okay. there were two verbals. Okay. <laughs> okay, that position passes. You guys rock. All right, position number six. Voters should be provided with public notice via multiple sources that are robust and contemporary, as well as individualized notice prior to being purged, removed from voter registration lists. So we need a motion on the table. You wanna put this one on? I move that we approve position number six for that voters should be provided with public notice via multiple sources that are robust and contemporary, as well as individualized notice prior to being purged, uh, removed from voter registration lists. Okay, and Barb seconds it. Oh, yes, I yes. It. Barb seconds it. It's Barbara Calvert, sorry. Uh, any clarifying questions? Okay, there being none on the table, please raise your hand if you vote to approve position number six. Vote to approve, Sextons. Thank you. All right, that's 25 in the Zoom room. All right, that position passes. On to position, we're halfway there. <laughs> on to position seven. To encourage voter participation, the League of Women Voters supports state voter outreach programs that seek to register eligible but unregistered voters. Do we need a motion on the table? Somebody from the Zoom room want to just speak up with a motion? Carla does. Okay, Carla? She makes a motion that we vote 
to uh, adopt position seven. Okay, Carla Roberts moves that we uh, vote to adopt position and number Ed, seven. Second. And Jim Edson, Edson. Edson seconds that. Uh -huh. So, are there any clarifying questions? I just have one question. Elizabeth. This is under third party. Like, does this secretly have something to do with third party? The question was, this is under the heading voter registration role management third party. That's the, uh, is, what does that mean? Yes, it has to, it actually has to do with third party sources of information that are used for voter registration role management, right? such as, but not limited to, Eric. And so uh, to, to give some sort of background, um, election boards in states don't have resources independently to um, manage voter registration rules. They are dependent on information from third parties, okay? such as Eric. Um, and so, and, and a third party could also be other states. So it's information that is not internally sourced by uh, an election authority. Thank you. Okay, we have some questions in the Zoom room as well. Uh, Christine Garvey, we, and she just got her hands up. Okay, Christine, do you have a question? Okay, that might have been a leftover vote. Uh, Reva. Reva, do you have a question? Okay. She's muted. Okay, any other right. hands up? Oh, okay, that was it. Okay, there being no other question, uh, we'll take a vote. Raise your hand if you are in favor of adopting position number seven. Stan and Tommy Sexton in favor. Thank you. We have 25 in the Zoom room. That motion passes. Okay, position number eight. The state of Missouri should provide uniform, transparent, and non-discriminatory data reporting tools and resources to help local election authorities to accurately maintain their voter registration roles. We have a motion on the table. Zoom room, I'm gonna call on you. You guys are already at the computer. <laughs> I, I move that we adopt uh, this uh, position eight that will provide non-discriminatory, transparent, uniform data reporting uh, for the maintaining of uh, voter registration rules. Okay, Reva Capillary moves that we adopt position number eight. Jim Edson seconds. Jim Edson seconds. Any clarifying questions? Uh, yeah, Greg, um, I'm just looking, could you put number seven down again? Can I just see the difference between seven and eight? Um, okay, to encourage voter the support outreach programs. Okay, I just needed to look at that again. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other clarifying questions? Uh, Carl has her hands up. I see a couple of hands up. Are they questions or or previous votes? Go ahead and ask your question if you, you can unmute and ask your question if it's a question. Okay, there being no questions, we'll take a vote on position. Oh, I'm sorry, Anne, oh, I ahead. do have a question. Okay, we do have a question. Uh, on Yeah, on eight. Um, and how would this be done? Is this done in another state? Hmm. Like does Colorado already do this or something? Yeah, actually, um, Eric was um, oh, that's true. Right. That, okay. And, and part of, we do not cite Eric here because we want these positions, and just going further, what right. we want these positions to do is to be evergreen, to be durable. Right. And for people 12 years from now to be able to, to use them. I mean, if, if you think about it, positions that were crafted in the right. late 90s, they seem recent to me, but that's actually 30 years ago. So we would like for these positions to be durable. And so as, as a consequence, we're not citing any one particular program. 
And right. Also, the, the the way that the positions are used for advocacy is outside the scope of voting in the positions. So how these are implemented mm -hmm. is not that is not uh, something that we include in a position. Okay. Any other clarifying questions? Okay. Okay. Oh, we have some hands up here. Do you want to just uh, reiterate what Eric stands for? for people? I know not, people not if nobody's asked for it. Not, not unless you were asking for it. Nope. <laughs> Uh, Jean, uh, Jean Ann, do you have a question? Okay. Okay, there being no other questions, uh, we will vote. Please raise your hand if you support adoption of position eight. It took me a second to remember. <laughs> We're on. It's, it's Stan and Tommy Sexton support. Thank you. All right, 26 in the Zoom room, that vote passes. Thank you, I mean that, uh, yeah, that vote passes. Motion passes. Okay, <laughs> position number nine, data from third party organizations used in voter registration list maintenance should use strict criteria, strong matches, and be tested for accuracy prior to use with an objective of minimizing dis disenfranchising eligible voters. So do we have a motion on the table? I see some hands up in the Zoom room. Somebody want to make a motion? I, I adopt that we, move. Or sorry, I, I move that we adopt position nine, data from third party organizations used in voter re registration list maintenance should use strict criteria, strong matches, and be tested for accuracy prior to use with an objective of minimizing disfranchising eligible voters. Okay, thank I you. I second it. Karine, okay. Um, I heard Stacy Webb second it, so we'll take that. Any clarifying questions? Two hands up. Stacy Webb is being here. Okay. Question, Judy Ann? Yikes, sorry about that. No. Okay. All right. Any questions in the live room? Okay. There being no questions, we'll vote to adopt. Position nine, please raise your hand if you are in favor of adopting position nine. Stan and Toby Sexton in favor. Thank you. That's 25 in the Zoom room. That motion passes. All right, the next section has to do with college voters. Position number 10, strict voter ID laws, including those which disallow college IDs unnecessarily disenfranchise voters, including college voters. Students should be allowed to use a valid college ID to vote. ID requirements should not be punitive or costly. So do we have a motion on the table? Carla makes that motion. Okay. Can you, Rob, I'll repeat. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I know. Uh, it kind of needs to be in the form of a motion. Uh, no, she, she does, she okay. She makes a motion to adopt. Okay. Thank you. Carla Robert Roberts. Oh, and Jim had some okay. Carla Roberts makes a motion to adopt position number 10 as written, and Jim Edson, Edson seconds it. So, any clarifying questions? Uh, Margaret. Uh, Margaret Gray has her hand up. Okay. Margaret, do you have a question? Nope, sorry, it was left over from the voting. <laughs> Just another moment. Okay, there being no questions, we'll take a vote on position number 10. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, we'll take a vote on position number 10. If you are in favor, raise your hand uh, if you're in favor of adopting this position. Stan and Tommy Sexton support. Okay, thank you. So we have 25 in the Zoom room, that motion passes. Okay. Position 11, the league opposes absentee voting restrictions that disenfranchise registered voters because of clerical error without providing notice and means to correct those clerical errors. 
The league also opposes other absentee voting restrictions that disenfranchise registered voters, such as notarization burdens and the inefficiency of the post office by imposing requirements on when ballots are received at the election authority rather than when postmarked. So could I have a motion on the table, please? Uh, Carl Laura? Bettis says, I move that we adopt position 11 as written. Oh, go Carl. And Jim Edson second. Carl Bettis the president's husband, moves <laughs> that we adopt position 11 as stated. And Jim Edson, Edson I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn your name eventually. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Seconds it. Uh, any questions on the table? Uh, Cheryl and, uh, says her hand up. Do you have a question, Cheryl? Very lame also. Sorry, no, sleep okay. at the wheel. T Terry, do you have a question? Okay. Okay, I'll give just another moment for questions here. Peg? I, I, I do just have a question. I know, I think I remember this coming up in the uh, consensus meeting, but so you're saying that it shouldn't be the, the, the postmark date? Yeah, so the, the question was, just to clarify, that this position supports um, election boards using, or the state, using the, the date of the postmark rather than the date that the ballot arrives at the, yeah. uh, the election board as the, you know, the, the uh, bar for the vote counting. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? Okay, there being none, we will vote to adopt pos position number 11. Please raise your hand if you are in favor of the adoption of position 11. Stan and Tommy Sexton support number 11. Thank you. That's 21 in the Zoom room, 23 in the Zoom room. And so that position passes. All right, last one, position 12. In addition to current uh, League of Women Voters efforts at high schools, the League of Women Voters Kansas City, <laughs> oh, all right, we'll be more consistent. The League of Women Voters KC should further develop partnerships and interactions with post-secondary educational organizations to support voter education efforts. So do we have a motion on the table? All right. Uh, um, I... I move that we adopt position 12 as written. Okay, Barbara Calvert moves that we adopt position 12 as written. Sorry. Jim Edson seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. All right, any clarifying questions? So, uh, Jim and Terry both have their hands up. Okay, Jim and Terry have their hands up. Do either of you have a question? Nope, nope. okay. okay. Yeah, because on on the last on the last one, no one wants to have a question. On the very last one, when the end is in lunch, is in sight. <laughs> okay, there being no questions, we will vote to adopt position number twelve. Please raise your hand if you support the adoption of position number twelve. Stan and Tommy Sexton support number twelve. Thank you. So that's twenty five in the Zoom room. That position passes as well. Thank you very much, everyone. We have just adopted 12 new positions. And uh, this I wanna thank the work of the committee. They did just a tremendous amount of work over the last two years. Yes, please, please a big round of applause. Um, and this is, uh, this is really important because this does allow us to advocate in ways that we couldn't before. And um, I know all of you get the legislative update every week that tells you whether you know we support or oppose legislation that's going through the state house and this is where those su the support or the opposition comes from it comes from the work that committees like this have done over the last 105 years and so thank you to everyone who showed up at one of those consensus meetings they were uh it was just terrific work that everyone has done so thank you very much rita Okay.
Absolutely. So Rita ask if I could clarify how this will move to the state level. Actually, I'm going to let Greg answer this because he's um, just before you start that, I just want to acknowledge that several people in the Zoom room are thanking the committee in, in the, um, you know, applause, applause. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Again, uh, my thanks to uh, the members of the committee as well as membership, especially what they did uh, during the consensus meetings. This is truly crafted by membership. Okay, going to Rita's question, I'll, I'll answer it by citing what happened last year. So we, we go back in time, rewind button, we approved the positions last year, and then they were advanced to the League of Women Voters Missouri membership. And, that, and the process was we actually did presentations to statewide to members of the Zoom presentations but statewide to members of the different leagues all across the state. Um, and then after that, they were then voted on at, at a League of Women Voters Missouri annual meeting when everyone was assembled. Thank you. All right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't forget to take off the name tags and put them in the bag before you leave. All right, fantastic work, you guys. That was great. That is not an opportunity in which is to sign the petition.